in the previous five videos we talked about how to build uh, almost how to almost build a quartz application where we are able to schedule emails and we are halfway through the process of developing our application and the rest endpoints so in the next half of this playlist we'll uh, finish up building the email scheduler controller we'll finish up building the email job which uh, handles the main uh, heart of the quartz application that we're building and we'll also test our application using Postman and see it working live uh, in action. So in this video, we'll finish up building our email scheduler controller so that we have a ready to use a endpoint, a post endpoint, which we can use to schedule our emails. In the upcoming videos, we'll also create a get endpoint from which we can see all the emails that we have scheduled and also look at how the database looks behind the scenes after we put in some information from quartz okay so let's uh, continue building or actually finishing building uh, our email scheduler uh, we need a bit of annotations here so we need a logging annotation so that we can log some of our messages we need a rest controller to make sure we have rest controlling mechanisms on our application now we need the scheduler that we are going to use. So let's do an auto wire of a private scheduler. Scheduler. Awesome. Now we can use the scheduler to schedule our jobs and make sure that all of them run when we want them to run. Let's uh, go ahead and start creating our post mapping. So let's have a post mapping annotation. This is going to be the sort schedule email. So you can have multiple things here. So you can have schedule email, schedule a job, anything which you would like. Uh, for the simplicity of this tutorial, we'll be going with schedule slash email. The next comes in the method declaration. So it's going to be a response entity that will be sending back and it will have the body of an email response and the function name now let's have some uh, parameters here so it will be a valid request body which is going to be an email request Okay, so this is our uh, method declaration, which where we actually implement our schedule email uh, for the app quartz application. Now let's go ahead and start implementing it. So let's uh, wrap the entire method inside a try catch block where we are able to catch any of the exceptions. So mostly we'll be having a scheduler exception from quartz, which we need to handle. So we can do a scheduler exception SE and just do a log dot error here uh, error while scheduling email and also give out this so that we are good to go now once we uh, give this out we need to make sure that we also give out a response an email response back to the user who's using it. So what we can do is we can create a new email response object. And if you remember uh, how this looks like, uh, let's actually go and see this. So we have a constructor where we have the success uh, and message. We also have another constructor where we have the success job ID, job group, and message. So which one do you think should we uh, use here? So. Here we'll be using the first one where we just do a success as false and the message is going to be error while scheduling email. Please try again later. Can be as descriptive as you want it to be. So that's up to you. And let's have it down so that we can see it. And all we do is we return this back. So return response entity dot status. 
there's going to be a HTTP status uh, of internal server error. So let's find that because it was an issue by uh, because of ports. Dot body is going to be an email response. Awesome. So now we have uh, we are able to successfully catch our application which uh, our method might throw. And the next part is to implement the post uh, structure for our method. So first, let's actually get the zone date time uh, using this date time, uh, the zone ID and the date which we take from the email request. So if you go to email request here, you can see that we're asking for the date time and the time zone. So now we need to configure that into uh, some uh, property which ports understands, which is going to be zone date time, let's call it date time only, it's going to be zone date time dot of email request dot get date time, comma email request dot get time zone. Awesome. So now we have our date time. Next, let's do a quick conditional to make sure that the date time dot is before zone date time dot now. So if it is scheduled in the past, then we cannot actually send it to the uh, user. We can't schedule it, right? So if we are scheduling it in the past, then we have to tell the user that the date must be after the current time. So let's just do an email response there. So let's do an email response email response, pretty new email response. And since it's a failure message, it's going to be false. And the message is going to be date time must be after current time. Great. Uh, let's get this down so that we have enough space to see it inside our single window. Great. And now we can just return this back. So I'll just copy this uh, return method and paste it here. Okay. Now comes the part where we actually deal with the quartz part. So first let's build our job detail. So we do a job detail, job detail is equal to build job detail. And we pass it in the email request. So this is what we had built in our previous video where we pass in the email request, we create a job data map, and then we build a job using the job data map, which has the email subject and body. So now that we have finished implementing that, we can use it to get a job detail back. Next is going to be a trigger. Trigger which is going to be equal to build trigger email request. And now we have our job detail and the trigger ready. So, okay, so here I think we made some changes. So it's gonna be the job detail and the zone date time, my bad. So this is gonna be job detail comma date time. Great. So now we have the job detail and the trigger ready. So the next part which we need to work on is scheduling the job. So this is how simple it is to actually schedule a job using quads. So we use the scheduler dot schedule job and all you have to do is pass in job detail and the trigger. And voila, that's how we schedule a job using quads. So it is that easy to use the framework because it gives you out of the box functions to use and schedule jobs. And of course, if you would like to see how, how it works behind the scenes, you can click on the scheduler or Java and see how it works behind the scenes, which I really highly recommend to do so. The next part is about sending back the response to the user. So in this case, particular case, we were actually able to schedule a job, right? So we should be able to send back a positive or a true success uh, email response object. So let's create that email response, email response is going to be new email response. And the success message is true. And let's send back the job detail dot get key dot get name. And also the group so job detail dot get key dot get group. 
and let's send a message with this which is going to be email schedule successfully great and now that we have this ready let's send back a response entity okay email response so this is how we implement a post request for our quartz scheduler where we are able to schedule an email so let's really quickly go through what we have built here and uh, make sure that we haven't missed out anything uh, here so first we make sure that our controller has all the required annotations so since it is a controller it have a rest, annot rest control annotation we'll be using our logging functionality to make sure that we catch the errors while we are in development so we have the sfl4j annotation next comes in the auto wired scheduler which we'll be using which is given by quartz and we use that to create our post mapping but before we do that we have two helper functions which is the build job detail and build trigger which help us build the job detail using the job data map and also the trigger using the trigger builder to make sure that our jobs are scheduled at the right date time and with the correct job information next comes in the schedule email method so here we first convert our date time and the time zone into a zone date time uh, which is a standardized form to make sure that we have the date time from any uh, time zone across the world we then check if the time uh, if the scheduling time is before the current time if so then we return back an internal server error or actually we do a bad request here because uh, this is something which the user uh, did incorrectly so we have to tell them that it's a bad request to send and we send a message that the date time must be after current time now if the user has passed through this or in other words if the date time is after the current time then we move on to building the job detail building the trigger and then scheduling the job using the schedule job method next after we do this we then create a new this email response object with a true success boolean the name and the group of the job and the email scheduled successfully message and send that back to the user using an ok status which is the 200 status code so this is how we create a post mapping and our email scheduler is completely uh, implemented in the next video we'll run this and see how it works and also uh, implement the heart of our quart, quartz e -play, uh, application which is the email job class so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video